Alright guys, welcome to our 2023 World Cup halfway stage video. We're about halfway through the World Cup and yeah, we're just going to go through a few um, things. It's been a good start. There have been um, ups and downs. For us Indian fans, mostly up. Um, good, good form from all the players. For England fans, not so much. For Pakistan fans, not could... so much. For Australian fans, it's looking even. okay. It's looking okay <laughs> for Australian fans. They had a slow start. I mean, there's been. We'll get into that a bit later. But I think we wanted to start with our team of the tournament so far. Yeah. So I'm gonna list out mine. Yeah. I think I, I think a lot of these players are like unanimous you like they pick themselves so i'll start with the openers quinton i've gone for quinton de Kock and has Rishama. to be uh, quinton de Kock, 300s i think has Top been one a, scorer has been incredible Ray sharma sets the turn at the start of the chase i think have they have they bad first yet india they might have they but might, yeah. he sets the turn basically and those two have been so good in like starting a big score number three i've gone for virat Kohli. has to be he has scored 100, a few high 50s, and I think he will really have a good tournament. At number four, I've gone for Rizwan. Yeah, it has to be. He's like, he's saved Pakistan for two games. Two games they could have lost without him. and He's batting so well at the moment. Number six, one of my favourite players in the Klaassen, world. Klaassen, Klaassen. Einrich Klaassen. <laughs> yeah, he's been sick as well. Uh, I don't, don't think there's much to say about him. He scored a few hundreds, I think. He's hitting like a 150 plus strike rate every game but for that mark i would say a, a good contender is rahul because of the stability yeah he rahul's good but he hasn't had the he hasn't had the impact yeah like he's been more of like an anchor with Kohli. i think india's top order has done so well that rahul hasn't had to step prove up himself yet. yeah number six i've gone for rachin ravindra i, I, I know mean, they play him a top of the order for batsmen but we he's not him in. So yeah. I've put him in at number six. And at number seven, who I think is having a very good World Cup, is Mitchell Santner. Santner, yeah. He's he, been for New well. Zealand, has been very good. Gunfielder as well. He's been I don't think there's well. many standout players. New Zealand are doing very well in this tournament, but I don't think there are many standout players. But I think Santner is definitely one of them. And then, where are we at now? Number eight, I've gone for Jadeja. Has to be like he... a bit of India bias there, but I do <laughs> I do think Jadeja walks into every team in the world. If you saw the ball he he bowled to get out, Steve Smith, it was so good, and his fielding, the catches he's been taking, also uh, the batting he did against New Zealand, it was very crucial. Like it says, like it was like around 30, 40, but like it was really important in the stage of the game. So yeah, number nine, I've gone for Mitchell Stark. I know he hasn't had an amazing mm. World Cup. But if you think about pace bowlers, yeah, I don't know if there are many better than him other than Bumrah, who I've got at number 10. Yeah, I agree. But I, I think Stark has not been as good as he should be. But again, yeah, you can't argue. I about mean, you can like, argue, you can put Shaheen Afridi in there. He's got a fire for me, even my... Oh, my, is he not in your team? He's not in my team. Who's your number 11 then? I'm curious. Number 11, I've gone for Adam Zampa. Really? He's had a very good World Cup. Uh, he's taken crucial wickets. Um, and yeah, so number 11, I've gone for Adam Zampa. You don't agree? Um, I know we've got three bowlers already, uh, three spinners. Yeah. But I don't think pace, I don't think many pace bowlers have done that great. I think Zampa's been really good in middle overs, in controlling. But I, I would also say that if you were to say that Kudip also has been really good. I agree. And I would say they've been similar. But like, when you look for a standout bowler, I don't think I'd go for Zampa. But I, I wouldn't know who to go for anyway, so... Fair yeah, enough. I think Kuldeep and Zampa have had, a, had a, both probably equal World Cup, but Zampa is playing overseas conditions. His team isn't doing as well, so I think yeah, he, yeah. he might have a slight edge. Slight edge. Okay, so that's our um, team. So overall, Quinton de Kock, Rohit Sharma, Virat Kohli, Rachin Ravindra, Mohamed Rizwan, Klaassen, Santner, Jadeja, Stark Bumra, and Zampa. Yeah. Obviously, you guys let us know in the comments who you think should we should have changed from the list who you think should have made it i think maybe um david warner obviously has a shout especially after his last few innings um and shaheen afridi trent bolt maybe i don't know you guys let us know who you think maybe we're missing a few players we, we surely maybe are some afghanistani players but we'll see nur ahmed has played well yeah a lot of players have been but this is just from the top of my head from top of my head yeah so then i wanted to move on to predictions for top four 
So oh. before the tournament, <laughs> what did you I, say? I said <laughs> India, New Zealand, South Africa, Pakistan. India, New Zealand, South Africa, and Pakistan. So India, South Africa, and New Zealand, I would they're, say. They're on track. India are pretty much there. Yeah. The other two, they probably have to win one or two more games and they're qualified. I see them both qualifying. So I think the, four, the fourth spot, I said Pakistan or England, I think I said also. England have had a shocker this tournament and Pakistan, they recently lost to Afghanistan. So it does spice things up in the mix. I think the real competition will be between England, Afghanistan, Australia. No, not England. You mean Pakistan? What did I say? You said England, Afghanistan. I mean Pakistan, sorry. I th- so I, I think the fourth the fourth position is going to obviously be in contention Australia, Pakistan, and maybe Afghanistan. It's going to be it'll be a big thing for them to qualify. You think England are out? I think so. I think so as well. They've won one game in like five or six. That's really bad. That's very poor. We said they had one of the best teams at the start of the World and Cup. D- don't forget, they still have to play India, South Africa maybe. Oh dear. Australia, they still have to play. Pakistan, they still have to play. How have they been losing this many games? So then? I mean, <sighs> they have lost to Sri Lanka and Afghanistan, which you'd say are big upsets. So not the massive upsets. upsets. Yeah. So Who did they beat? Is it Netherlands or someone? Probably something like that. <laughs> I, I can't remember off the top of my head. But that's our predictions for top four. Yeah. So we're saying Australia. Australia. I'm saying Australia too. Um, so then we'll move on to biggest flops of the tournament in terms of players. <sighs> Who you thought was going to do good? Bob Rosen. <laughs> he has to be said. Surely he has to start. be said. I mean, a lot of people are going to say he scored 70 odd in his last game. But if that's the le- the standard... They still lost, though. If that's the standard Barbarism is being held to, he's number one ODI ranked batsman in the world. Which I also want to say, I don't. I think the ranking should change. I don't know. Like, there have been so many batsmen who have been better than him in recent times. Like, his form has not been good in the past, I would say, two, three months, four months, maybe. Asia Cup, all the way through to the World Cup. And I feel certain batsmen have had a really good year so far. Like, Coley, obviously, I think he's ranked five now. He's had a sick year. Shubman Gill had a sick year. They both have the first and second most hundreds in this year, I think. And you see all these other batsmen who are really performing. Like, who? who? Like, Aiden Markram's performing. Class and even. Class and even. You see, Rassi van der Dussen was one at one stage. But, like, yeah. he he's yet to fire as well. So, it's South Africa. Yeah. <sighs> so, your flop of the tournament is Barbarism? I would say that. But even then, I know he's got a few semi-high scores. But it's not good enough. But I wouldn't say that's the biggest flop. But I'd probably say biggest flop is will got to be one of the England boys, maybe Joss Butler or even Ben Stokes. Maybe. I'd because say that. Think about it. If you look at everyone's team of the tournament before, Stokes and Butler were Just both in, in every single team. And I don't think either of them, Butler more so. Butler, like I saw after the tournament, after the match today, he came out and did an interview and said, I take responsibility for all our losses. Um, I've not been setting an example for my team to play well, which I agree with. Obviously, the whole team is struggling, but if you're a captain who's supposed to be one of the best white ball players in the world, especially with experience in IPL in India, hasn't been firing from the front. Yeah. So I'd say Josh Butler is probably the flop. I would say the other flops as well, in terms of, because England have been the biggest flop team. So I'd say the all-rounders, I'm talking about Sam Curran and Chris Wokes. I think they had a lot of, uh, expectation upon them especially like works with the ball he's been he was good in the ashes when he came about you'd think he'd offer more stability but teams have actually been hitting them quite well in the power play and mm. I feel they don't have that bowler to like calm things down and they just seem flustered and Sam Curran as well nothing with the bat nothing with the ball I feel they're two big flops and I was thinking of one earlier yeah Mitchell Marsh I don't know why they're opening with Mitchell Marsh. He when, scored 100 in the game. Huh? He scored 100. He scored 100, but like, I think opening partnerships are very important in um, cricket, whatever format. I feel Kawaja would offer a lot more stability at the top of the order. Kawaja has been in very good form this year. I disagree with that, but we, that's what we can talk about that in a different video. Yeah. So, uh, moving on, we've talked about the biggest flops. How about the biggest surprises and biggest standouts? In terms of teams and players. So in terms of teams, I'd probably go with Netherlands have done very well and Afghanistan have done very well. 
Yeah, as in there were there wasn't much expectation upon both those teams. I think every, we all knew there was going to be one. Like Netherlands were going to beat up one. They're going to beat one team. Yeah. But to beat South Africa, who have looked very strong, and Afghanistan to have beat Pakistan and England, who both maybe not Pakistan but England were definitely favourites to win this World Cup. One of the favourites, yeah. So, so I'd say those are two probably biggest surprises of the tournament so far. I agree. I agree. In terms of, do you say biggest disappointments? No, we already did that. Biggest flops in it. Sorry, biggest flops. Uh, that would be surprise. this is a biggest yeah. like standout or surprises. Think of players. Ugh. So in terms of biggest standout players, I would go. I think you should you you can say Coley because like there's been a lot of like controversy and like criticism on yeah, him. But you do expect him to turn up. You do expect him to turn up, and he has turned up. Like boy, has he turned up? But I would probably say, I'd say Klassen. Yeah, but the thing is, a lot of people don't really know who Klassen is. But if you're like a proper cricket fan, you know who he is and you know what he's capable of. Yeah. So like I, in my head, I, I was expecting him to do some madness, especially with like the strike rate and stuff. He, he He's such a power hitter and like he has demonstrated that. Yeah. But I sort of expected it, but he's still doing it to like the top of his ability, which I have to say is standing out as well. I was going to say also Dilshan from Sri Lanka. He's like second highest wicket taker. Uh, I don't think many people would have expected Who? him exactly. Who? Some some something Dilshan. Dilshan, for Sri Lanka. Yeah, he's like second or third highest wicket taker. Kumara. I don't know. Okay, I, well I don't really know my Sri Lankan cricketers, so I'll take your word for it. And um, then okay, so let's move on to player of the tournament so far. I think obviously there are a lot of shouts. But do do we do we base this off individual performance as well as where the team is at in the tournament? If you know what I mean. I just think who has played the best in this tournament so far. My pick would probably be Quinton de Kock. Yeah, I was going to say Quinton de Kock. My heart is saying Coley, but like have to be realistic. I like, I can't be that biased. Quinton de Kock, three hundreds in this tournament has set the base for his team to like. I think South Africa have got three hundred plus every time they've batted first. Like yeah. it's incredible. Like Quinton de Kock has set the benchmark for them every single time, so he has to be surely. Yeah, so I'd probably say Quinton de Kock. I would agree. Maybe honourable mentions, obviously Virat Kohli, Rohit Sharma, Rohit Sharma, Mohammed Rizwan, David Warner. In terms of bowlers, Zampa, Bumrah, Santner, Shaheen. Like Shaheen. A lot of I don't. Think, I think the bowlers. We knew this tournament would be like batsmen, batsmen heavy, heavy. <laughs> so. I think bowlers have done well. Yeah. In terms of, I mean, you look at the numbers, it's got to be Quinton de Kock. It has to be. Young player of the tournament. Okay, so this is going to be a player who's under the age of, let's say, 24, which is quite young for cricket standards. Yeah. Who would um, you say? I would say it uh, has to be Ruchin. I would also agree. Ruchin Ravindra. Such who, a find, isn't it? He is a very good cricketer. Um, I'm telling you now, he's going to go for big bucks in the IPL auction. He's going to go for massive He's going to go... Uh, 10 crore plus 100%. Like, his batting, he hits the ball so cleanly. He's such a, like, good player to watch, batting. And you see, he can. he's a player you can open, who can bat at number three, who yeah. can finish the innings, and he offers a lot with the ball. And fielding. And he's fielding Decent well. fielding. And he's young. <laughs> so, I think he's a complete package, and I'd probably say he's a young player of the tournament so far. I agree. I reckon before the tournament, you'd probably look at Shubman Gill. Shuman but Gil, he's missed a lot of games unfortunately due to illness and he's been very inconsistent so I don't think Shuman Gill has lived up to the World Cup expectations so far he's looked good though he's looked good before like, he gets out early he has been like middling them for the yeah. boundaries but he, we're still waiting for that big innings from him yeah. so you'd have to go for Rachin Ravindra have to but I think like honourable mentions I would say Noor Ahmed Noor Ahmed is so he's uh, been and in general the like Afghani openers like good bars yeah. and stuff yeah. because like they're actually quality. Like, Gurbaz is such a clean hitter. And Noor Ahmed, we saw what he can do because I think he played for KKR in the IPL. He is, like, such a good mystery spinner. And, like, you just see, like, he. I think he got the crucial wicket yeah. against Pakistan to win the game for the team. So yeah. he's been better at bowling than Rashid Khan this tournament for Afghanistan, 100%. So to end this video, there have been a lot of upsets this tournament. Who would you say is the biggest upset of this tournament well you can only say one one answer to this it has to be England England 
England and to pick the team, I would say England against Afghanistan. Because I'm not saying Afghanistan aren't a good team. It's just I think that was their first win in the whole of World Cup history against England. Yeah. I mean that they have a strong team now. I'm not taking that away from them, but England should win this game. Yeah. And like England were favourites to win this whole tournament. Afghanistan were not even predicted to do maybe they were predicted to do well. They weren't even classed as underdogs. Yeah. That's what he's trying to say. I would probably go with Netherlands Netherlands and beating South, South Africa. Africa. Because, because I think they won't they won't actually lose many games after yeah. this. I mean before the tournament South, I thought South Africa were favourites, but I don't think a lot of people would have said they were one of the favourites. They were definitely up there in contention, but you saw the way South Africa started this tournament, yeah. and for Netherlands to go and beat them, that's a very big um, upset, I'd say. I, st- I still don't know how it happened, but yeah. like I agree. Like At the start of the tournament, we know these players. We know the Markram, Janssen. Janssen, not so much. I bet he's played well. Rabada. Quinton de Kock. Quinton de Kock. Klaassen. Klaassen. We have all these players. And the thing is, if they're in form, they're just unstoppable. Like Miller, when he's in form, he's unstoppable. And, and South Africa right now look like they're not going to stop for anyone. But yeah. Netherlands did stop yeah. them. So that's a big upset. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, we really appreciate it. Um, good luck to the rest of your team so for the rest of this tournament. Um, and yeah if you have any video ideas or any questions leave it in the comment section we read all of your comments and we really appreciate that and yeah if you have any uh, disagreements or anything be, feel free to let us know in the comments and yeah thank you guys so much for watching and we'd just like to thank you for 10k subscribers and 10k on TikTok and 5k on Instagram so across all platforms you guys have really supported us and we're just going to try and dish out as much content as we can for you guys. Yeah, we started this maybe a month or, month or maybe even less than two months ago. And all the support from you guys has been tremendous. 10k on YouTube is no joke. And 10k on TikTok and 5k on Instagram. We really appreciate all the support. So thank you guys so much. Thanks guys. See we'll you in the next video. See you next video.